Hello there, boxing fans around the world. Thank you for joining us once again on Talk and Fight for another episode of Boxing News Today. And today we're going to start off down in Argentina where Christian Ayea won the World Boxing Association Fittable Super Welterweight title this weekend after defeating Christian Andino by knockout in two rounds and taking the belt from him at the Palacio de las Portes in the Mar del Plata in Buenos Aires. Ayala's youth and physical fitness were noticeable from the very beginning. It was a one-way fight to the surprise of the fans who expected much more parity between Ayala and the hitherto champion Andino, who were both from Argentina. But a right hand to the face and Andino to the canvas in the very first round, and although he recovered, he looked in bad shape. Seeing what happened in the opening round, Ayala came out determined to end the fight in the second chapter and launched an attack to connect Andino and put him on the ropes. It was another right hand to the jaw that sent Antino to the canvas again in that round. And although the referee is making the protective count, the corner decided to intervene. Ayala showed his strength against a more experienced opponent, defeated him with ease, and won the regional belt that will help him get a better opportunity in the future at 20 years of age. He has been gradually improving and has already made a name for himself on the continental scene. His record now improves to seven wins, one loss, one draw, with three knockouts. For his part, and Dino dropped to 16 wins, three losses, one draw with two knockouts. Moving a bit uh, further north, we see that Vertex Promotions returns on February 12th with another St. Valentine's Day Massacre, headlined by undefeated super lightweight prospect Adrian Tonka Sosa. Uh, and again, that will take place at Mosley's on the Charles in Dedham, Massachusetts. Says Vertex promoter Dave Clark, we're very excited to continue promoting our shows to showcase local talent. We made our debut last September and promoted three more pro shows last year. We've learned a lot and continue our goal to keep local fighters active and provide an entertaining night out for fans. And they're setting a great example and hopefully we'll see more of that in 2022. Uh, the 26-year-old Sosa, who's 12-0, and 0, fighting out of Lawrence, Massachusetts, headlined Vertex show last September in his first action in more than two years. He will take on an opponent to be determined in an eight-round main event. In an eight-round co-featured event, undefeated ABF American West and NBA Continental Champion Ray J. the Destroyer Bermudez, who's 15-0 and with 11 knockouts, faces another uh, determined, uh, to-be-determined fighter. Uh, as the Albany fighter continues his march towards a major fight, undefeated welterweight prospect James, the Slim Reaper Parella, who's 8-0 with five knockouts, fighting out of Mansfield, Massachusetts, is matched tough against Mexican challenger Danny Venado Flores, who's 15-26-1 with eight knockouts in an eight-round bout. It's tank time again. Undefeated Weymouth, Massachusetts, super welterweight prospect Francis Frank the Tank Hogan, who's 9-0 with nine knockouts, will attempt to keep his perfect record intact and go for a 10 for 10 and eight rounder versus again, and the box should be announced. Uh, a note to uh, Mike Orr at four and uh, his fans, Boston Irish will be in the house as Ireland natives, lethal Larry Friars who's 11 and five with four knockouts goes head to head against Tommy, the kid O'Toole who's two and oh, two knockouts. And uh, Friars is a welterweight now living in Yonkers, New York. As an Ulster Intermediate Champion, while lightweight as light heavyweight O'Toole is 2-0, returns to the Boston area for his third pro fight. And O'Toole is fighting on a Galway, and he's a 2019 Irish Elite Championship gold medalist. Friars will be in the scheduled eight-rounder with O'Toole, and uh, both will be matched against opponents to be determined. Elsewhere in America, at the West Coast, we see that Jose Ramirez is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Jose Pedraza. Jose Ramirez and Jose Pedraza, junior welterweight showdown, postponed, uh, has been postponed to Friday, March 4th at the Save Mart Center Live, which will be uh, shown exclusively on ESPN Plus after Pedraza had tested positive for COVID-19. The homecoming of former un unified junior welterweight world champion Jose Ramirez is happening just 27 days later than expected. Central Valley native Ramirez will fight former two-weight champion uh, Jose Sniper Pedraza in the 12-round main event 
as I said, on March 4th in Fresno, California. They were scheduled to fight February 4th, but as I said, Petra Z tested positive uh, for COVID. And now in the sixth round heavyweight special feature in, immediately before the main event, Olympic silver medalist Richard Torres Jr., also from the Central Valley town of Tulare, California, will make his long-awaited professional debut. The 10-round Kobe Joe will see top-ranked debut featherweight contender Joet Gonzalez, who will fight Filipino veteran Gio Santisma. The entire Ramirez Pedraza card, as I said, will stream live and exclusively in the United States on ESPN+. Speaking of California, we see that Juan Francisco Estrada is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Roman Gonzalez III. That will take place at the Panchanga Arena in San Diego uh, a day after the aforementioned fight on the 5th of March. Juan Francisco Gallo Estrada, the current World Boxing Association Super Flyweight Champion, expects to be a lot more active in 2022 than he was in 2021. Last year, he starred in his best fight against Nicaraguan Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, and it was his only fight. He says, it's always bad to be inactive for so long. However, we've always been training because I was at a date, first October, then December, and then I changed it to March. But I've been coming in, so I haven't been inactive 100%. I hope I fight in March and then see what comes next, said the Mexican 115-pound champion. The fans are certainly looking forward to this third fight between Gallo and Chocolatito, who won in their two bouts and left uh, great sensations, and this motivates the Aztec War even more. It's a fight that people are expecting. The first two bouts were well-liked, and the third, I don't want to leave any doubts. I want to win convincingly, said Estrada. Elsewhere, making his professional debut in 2006 and retiring in 2013, Lightning Lonnie Smith challenged for the Universal Boxing Organization World Lightweight Ch title in 2012, and we have a little bit of an update. AKA El Negro Mexicano, due to his exciting fighting style, Smith appeared to have it all to become a star in the sport. Looks, talent, a great trainer and Hall of Famer, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, and more than solid pedigree. His father was former WBC World Super Lightweight Champion Lonnie Smith Sr., who had a record of 44-7-2 with 26 knockouts, from whom he inherited the Lightning moniker. Unfortunately for the younger Smith, who regularly sparred with former two-division two world champion Zab Judah, bad luck probably prevented him from going all the way. He started boxing at 13, compiled a good 51-10 amateur record, winning numerous national and international tournaments against tough competition before entering the paid ranks at 19 years of age. However, he didn't take the professional scene by storm in his first 18 months as a prize fighter, and after nine bouts, his record stood at a mediocre 5-2-2, two, and two, which he has blamed on poor management. But then things started to come together for Smith as he won his next nine straight before losing the world-class champion uh, fighter Vincente Escobedito, who was 24-3 and three at the time, in March of 2012. Not long after, in June, he got a second shot at glory, when he fought reigning WBO World Lightweight Champion Mason Menard, who was 19-1 in Louisiana. Menard won a unanimous decision, but Smith proved that he belonged on that stage. He was going to prove it again twice, but unfortunately, Smith never got a second chance to emulate his father's achievements of becoming a world champion. In March of 2013, he had appeared on his way to beating 18-1-1 Michael Perez on the Bernard Hopkins versus Tavares Cloud undercard in New York when a clash of head forced the fight to be stopped and declared a technical draw. Two months later, he floored another can contender, Cornelius Locke, who was 26 and one at the time with 13 knockouts twice, but was not awarded the decision after 10 rounds in Detroit. He retired with a record of 14, five and three with 10 knockouts and a lot of unfulfilled potential. Elsewhere around the world, speaking of uh, who's up and coming, let's see, Daniel Dubois is going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Trevor Bryan, perhaps. Daniel Dubois has placed his winning of a first world title belt right at the top of his 2022 wish list and has WBA champion Trevor Bryan firmly in his sights. The London heavyweight knockout artist known as Dynamite enjoyed a productive 2021 with two typical knockout victories over Bogdan Dinu and Ho, uh, Joe Kuzmanu to take his professional ring record to 17-1 and one with 16 stoppages, and more importantly, place himself in the top spot of the WBA rankings. His explosive success has seen him installed as the number one challenger for the WBA World Heavyweight Championship, currently held by American Bryan. Promoter Frank Warren has indicated a March return 
for the 24 year old and says he would favor a straight shot at the champion if the fight can be made. Says Dubois, it is a new year with new things on the horizon, so I'm really excited. It was a good year to kickstart the comeback and I enjoyed it, and everything went well. I just look forward to the future now, a new year, a new start, and a new beginning. That Brian match is a fight. It's going to happen. It's a fight I want, a title I want. Things are ticking at the moment, and hopefully it will go that way. Speaking of British uh, heavyweights, Joe Joyce has been told he'll be able to carry on punching in six weeks' time as he accelerates his recovery following a wrist injury that ruled him out of an early 2022 date. The juggernaut was scheduled for February action with the intention of beefing up his CV and topping up his appearance ahead of a potential world heavyweight title uh, tilt later this year. The 36-year-old is number one ranked by the WBO and is next in line to face the winner of the forthcoming Alexander Yusik anthony Joshua rematch, which looks likely to take place in May. Again, promoter Frank Warren has indicated a preference for April when it comes to Joyce's return to action. The 13-0 Putney man with 12 stoppages to his name sustained the injury after returning from a training stint with his revered coaches, Mel Salas, in Las Vegas, who he's unable to work with across uh, to build up to his victory over Carlos Takama at Wembley in July of last year due to travel restrictions. Speaking of uh, let's meet someone, let's meet uh, a direct descendant of the great Rocky Marciano, Brandon, Brandon Cap Capiello, dropped another music video today about the New England Patriots. For those of you who may not know, they're a National Football League team uh, out of Massachusetts, who we've uh, mentioned earlier. Anyway, Capiello's paternal great-grandmother and Marciano's wife were sisters. His grandfather, Michael Dunat Capiello, traveled everywhere with Rocky during his undefeated Hall of Fame professional boxing career. Brandon's father and uncle, respectively, promoter, matchmaker, Rich Capiello, and trainer, former pro boxer, Mike Capiello, own and operate Capiello Boxing Gym in downtown Brockton, Massachusetts. Now, most of you will know that that is known as the City of Champions, mainly due to Hall of Famer, marvelous Marvin Hagler, who also fought out of Brockton. If you want to read more on this story about this young musician, please go to boxing247.com. Uh, there's a very uh, extensive story on the youngster there. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me for all the headlines today. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And we'll see you once again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.